Hello and welcome to Flory Models. For this particular build, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be teaching the basics of modeling right the way through. So for this particular one, we're gonna be covering things like assembly, gluing, and then obviously filling, sanding, rescribing, re-riveting. That's really what we're gonna be focusing on to get the basics uh, down, to get you right ahead with your modeling skills and things like that. So whatever we learn from this particular build, you're gonna be able to take on to build pretty much everything. Now, we're not gonna do a complete step-by-step -step build. I'm gonna rush ahead quite a lot of it to push through to show you more of the interesting aspects of the modeling and then show you those in detail. But the whole point is we're gonna work with this kit as basically our basics range of right the way through of showing how to do all the construction steps and then we're going to go into the painting and then obviously with the weathering and things like that to try and achieve something like this so this is what you can hopefully gonna sort of strive to achieve at the end of the day. This is the Tamiya. It's about 135 pounds now, this particular kit. It's very expensive. It's very detailed and all the rest of it. And then obviously going along with a nice paint job and obviously a nice weathering job like this, we can achieve something quite nice. What I'm gonna try and show you is that for a kit that is roughly around about 35 pounds, a hell of a lot cheaper, we can come along with something just as good as we've got back there. So again, just using the basic kit but we're not going to put any aftermarket of this and then by just going through a standard sort of paint finish and then some clever weathering tips at the rest of it we can get it looking like a 145 pound Tamiya kit at the end of the day. So anyway this one's going to be quite a quick quite fast and furious right the way through but hopefully you'll be able to pick up some bits and pieces as you make along. So again we've already done videos already that talk about obviously what to look out for when you're moving with a kit and going forward and things like that. Again this is one of those ones which is quite a nice example because we're using uh, a Ravel kit like this some of the areas when you're looking at the parts and you're going through them and checking them over and things like that some little things to look out for. So actually what we have on here if I remember the right one We've got what we talk about as flash. Again, good example down here of showing what we're talking about. So if we just get the camera a little bit closer. When we talk about flash, we talk about this type of thing. And as you can see, it's blurred along. And you look along the actual sprues and things like that, they're a little bit, got bits of plastic hanging off them. Now, the reason flash actually occurs is literally the molds, two halves coming together, there's a tiny gap. It's not a perfect fit right the way through. And sometimes when you're using, shall we say, uh, you know, lesser tight companies, these especially short run you can see this all the time but don't be put off it's not actually a problem as you can see down in here is nine times out of ten you can push it and it just comes off so it's one of these things it looks a lot worse than it actually is and the same thing can happen obviously we've got the burring line of the bits in between most times the sprue you can see the edges of it down in here look worse than it actually does on the part. The part then tends to be quite clean, but to be honest, you get a lot of people who always got lots of flash in it and all the rest of it, whereas you can see down there, you just push it off. So sometimes when you're looking again at some of the parts, and we've got them just down in here, you can see these edges, they're not crisply done. This is literally just flash as well. And as you can see, we've got a little bit just on here. So again, a quick literally plant with a knife, and it's gone and then we can give it a quick sand so forth and so on to actually clean these up but again you can get little bits we've got a bit just down in here and around here and it just needs a little bit of cleanup and again these things can happen but honestly don't be put off by them again AAA kits, Tamiya, don't see it. Things like this, you see it all the time. But these are you know, nice and easy things to clean up. They're on here. This one here, to be honest, is a bit thicker than normal. That's quite a hefty bit of flash. But again, just trim them off, sand them off, clean up the parts, and you'll be good to go. Sometimes you can get it, and it is a little bit like it down in here. The entire part is covered in flash. But again, it's quite easy to see where it is. A little bit of cleanup. But again, the things you have to think about here, we are building a 30-second scale Spitfire, which is quite nice detail it's got everything we'd expect to have but it's a bit flashy needs a little bit cleaner don't forget it's 100 quid cheaper than this kit and okay this kit has got a few little niceties on it as well that this one hasn't so for instance this one's got a fully detailed engine but if you're not worried about it you're not going to display it open you're not worried about it the cockpit as well maybe just a few little things in there but again if you wanted to you could spend just a little bit of money and get a little bit of aftermarket so you might think to yourself pat set harnesses perhaps obviously this kit doesn't come with it you can pay 20 quid set harnesses just to finish off that cockpit you have something looking very nice or like we've shown before we've got videos on it there make your own make your own set of harnesses pop them in and you'll be absolutely fine and no one from a distance is going to know any of the wiser and again you're the one who's only spent 
35 pounds, maybe say 50 pounds with a few aftermarket bits and pieces in there and all the rest of it, instead of 135 on a kit as you make your way through. So again, those are just the little things that I wouldn't be worried about. Don't worry about them, just push through, clean up the parts and make your way on with the build. If you're never sure about what's flash and what's not, and occasionally it can get a, bit, a little bit like that, always have a look at the instructions. Have a good look at the instructions, go through them, familiarize yourself with it, and if you can, test fit it. So cut it off of the sprue, test fit it. If you find that flash is in the way, trim it off and you're good to go. But I won't go through hacking through because every now and again you might find that a little bit of flash is in amongst perhaps a tab. And if that tab gets cut off as well, it can be a right pain trying to line it up or get it to stand on or clip into a certain item. But again, it's not the end of the world. You can easily make a new tab for it, glue it on, or just glue it into position without the tabs and things like that. So that's just early things. The other things as well is obviously make sure the ejector pins underneath here like these, make sure they're all flush or slightly sunk. If they're raised and standing proud, what can happen is, especially if you've got a situation like down in here when you've got two halves coming together, if any of these down in here are sitting a little bit proud, you could be into a position where they actually don't sandwich together nicely and then you can have a gap and it can be unsightly so forth and so on or you get to that thing of pushing it together and it actually pushes through onto the other side of the part that you're doing just to make sure they are all good as well so what i'm going to do i'm going to pop on with the cockpit make our way on with that one get that one tidied up and put together and then we'll come together with any little problems we got i think you need to know about we'll show you there but the next bit we'll be looking at is obviously gluing a few of the parts together Okay, so you can follow along with this particular build in one of two ways. You can either watch this as a quick build, as we're gonna do here, or you can see it under the new bite size series. So what's gonna happen is with this particular build, we're gonna run through this one quite quickly, uh, basically step after step after step in this video build. Or if you wanna see the more specifics about this one, about like construction, and then about gluing, about filling, sanding, rescribing, re-riveting, things like that, you can also watch them as bite size and just skip ahead to those particular segments. So as you can see, we're working down in here on the Rebel Spitfire. And to be honest, it goes together really well. There's some very, very nice details details in this kit considering it is at the sort of cheaper end. Now we've already just spoken about obviously flash and dealing with things like that and to be honest looking around on the kit there's a lot of it but again it's one of those things it's not the end of the world it's really simple cleanup with it and again it just takes a little bit of time and you're good to go and you're back up to where any other kit would be. So as you can see down in here in front we've already moved ahead just a little bit uh, we've done a little bit of construction work, just putting things like the cockpit together. So as you can see down in here, all we've actually done is put it together and a basic paint job. So for this particular one, all we've actually done is come in here with a little bit of Tamiya, I can just grab it, cockpit green. So XF71 for our case, just down in here like this. And we've popped in and we've sprayed everywhere around. The instrument panel, all we've done, we've painted it in place, hand painted it, and we've done the outer bezel in a little bit of XF85. And then the inner six uh, dials in that inner instrument panel, we've literally just done it in gloss black because in reality is they are a little bit different. We've painted a little bit of hand painting around the gun column uh, down in there in the control stick. And then obviously the headrest at the back, we've done a little bit of flat black as well just to take care of that. So we've put all of those together. To be honest, the instructions are really good. No real problems with that at all. It just flows together. We've also done the side consoles. So again, same, exactly the same thing, apart from we've used a little bit of rubber black on these ones down in here. So a little bit of X85 for those. Those will be detailed up. We're gonna talk about painting and weathering, but we've done both of those and they go together pretty straightforward. Same goes with the side. So we've actually put the little bottle on here. We've got, I think this is the uh, little handle uh, or the wobble handle. I think that is for the actual uh, primer system. That's down in there like that. And then on the other one, we've got the little oxygen tanks down in the back. And I think we, this is the radio switch up at the front here. And again, they all need a little bit of hand painting and a little bit of finesse, which we'll do in a moment, all right? So don't panic about those. We're gonna get them together. And it is gonna be a basic job. So basic paintwork put down, no problem. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing with this one, a little bit of hand painting onto this one, and then obviously a wash just to really bring it to life. And then obviously we can think about buttoning up so it just speeds up this entire build all the way through so next up what we're going to do is a very quick simple bit of weathering down in here so you can see we've got our little cockpit down in here for this we're just going to use some dark iron again so one of my favorite colors 214 this is a buffable but you could use any silver it all works roughly the same first of all make sure you give this a good mix now this is almost empty this one but still want to get it to go 
All buffable paints will have a really, really thick pigment at the bottom. If you don't thoroughly mix it, all you're gonna be doing is taking off the sort of painty black paint off the top and not the good stuff off the bottom. So again, we've got this down in here, so make sure it's got a good mix. I've got a couple of brushes, which is one here and one here, and these are my two brushes I only ever use for this particular job. And as you can see by the end of them, they're pretty broken and worn up, but that's to do with types of dry brushing as well. So, because you need to get in amongst it and go through. So what you want is something with quite a tough bristles. You want them to be quite short. You don't want long, because you don't want it to flick. You want it to literally rub on top. So if you have got a brush, what you can do is just cut it down. So if it's a little bit long, just cut it down. Doesn't matter, because it's going to be a rough old job for this one. And then what we're going to do is, as always, take a little bit of paper towel because you need something to be dry brushing this with again so then all we're going to do is I tip this somewhat to the side a little bit and then we just come in here and we grab a little bit of the thicker stuff underneath but you can just mix it all together like this and then rub all of it basically off the side of your brush because you don't want anything at all. And this is the good thing about this, it goes on forever. So then what we do, we just come down in here and we give it a brush. And you can see it looks black, but as you rub it, you'll notice this goes quite metally. And what you can do, you can go along like this, and we're just making sure we haven't got any on the edges. So we're rolling it and pressing it all in there. If you've got another brush, don't dip it into there, just put it into here and pick up. And you can grab what's here now. And this acts a bit like a, a wet palette in reverse because this is drying out but it'll be good to go as well so with all of these on what we can do is literally pop round the entire thing so what i'm going to do i'm just going to grab my glasses here and then we're just going to pop along so we're going to do a lid on the floor and as i say we've got quite a bit going on so we always start on the floor because that's going to be more scratched up and worn than anywhere else so you can do and the great thing about these is you catch it in the light it looks really strong off color you can hardly see it and that's the great thing and all we're doing is running around everywhere on this so this is just setting off our standard and we're going to go over the black and all these different areas around the back and to start with we're not going to go near the instrument panel because we want this to wear off we're just trying to come in from all these different angles really just to get this warm look going on and set our tones so we just turn in here a bit on the grip all the sides of these right the way around and this is just going to give us a really straightforward weathering type job to this one bit on the pedals be careful because they are going to be fragile so little flecking techniques and again just a little bit round in here whoops that bit probably shouldn't have come off we have to glue that back in obviously didn't glue that in very well and again, little bits on the back. That's all of those on there. Then what we're going to do, turn our attention to the sides. So again, we're just going to rub this lightly. And this will just set the tone of all the weathering because it's going to have a wash over this. But there you go. It just gives it that sort of worn look to it. And then again, just down over these. Um, obviously on the black, it's going to reflect really very, very strongly. But even over the greens, as you can see, it works quite well and if you want to do that wear and tear you can see it catches in there very nicely and then last up what we're going to do is the actual instrument panel now so we're just going to be flicking right the way over all of these so all the bezels and the dials come to life and again just lightly you're not pushing too heavy just running around in circles and again hopefully you can see now how it starts to all come to life and obviously the more you do this, the more it will go metallic and the stronger it gets. And there we go. So that's down in there just like that. Now, if you wanted to, obviously you can come along and you can put decals into this and all the bits and pieces, or you can obviously replace it with everything else. But we're doing this as sort of a, a starter's guide to this. So we're not going to go two over the top and we're just going to put a little bit of wear and tear around the seats and as we said before if you wanted to you could come in with an aftermarket set and various things for harnesses but that's our seat sort of weathered and everything ready to go in but hopefully you can see if i move that out of the way that's actually now set that weathering quite nicely down in there just like that and then again we're going to do exactly the same for these 
again, just getting in amongst everywhere. And again, we're going to see these from underneath, so we're just going to wear a little bit over the top, as you can see. Now it starts to wear it all down, and the same just down in here, over the box. And again, these are formers over the, these are oxygen tanks. Just a little bit over there, and it's really very quick, very straightforward. Again, just a little bit under here. The whole point of doing under here is obviously it's where the flaps show through, but you can probably see how shiny this is getting, and that's just where we're manipulating right the way over this. So there we go, that's those all done just like that. So that sets off very nicely your actual weathering just like that. So that sort of gets it down in there. But what we want to do now is obviously just weather it up a little bit more. So what we're going to do is make up a really simple wash. Now, you could just knock up a little bit of perhaps black acrylic paint uh, and you put that down, but you don't want to be using hot thinners with it because you want it to actually work very well. And obviously this has just got an acrylic paint onto it. So if you was to be coming in with like lacquer thinners and trying to brush it around, it would eat into the acrylic stuff. So if you can, what you want to use is something completely different. So in our plug case, what we're going to use is enamels. So all we've got down in here is a little bit of enamel thinners. We're just going to grab a little bit of uh, oil color. So I've got a little bit of the shadow uh, back down in here so then all we're going to do is grab a little bit of that pop it into our thinners okay so that starts that off and what we're going to do is just grab a little bit more thinners and make a nice thin wash down in here, and then good old mix. And make sure you're thoroughly mixed up right the way through. And then what we're going to do is going to wash this literally right over. And as you can see, straight away it's going to grab and it's going to weather. And again, just down in these, a little bit just under here, because again, you will see it a little bit just behind here. And then straight away, before and after, you can see how it's going to work. All right, so we just do this side, and this is just the quickest little weathering job you can do. But what it will do is this sort of dries, it will give a nice weathered look right the way, and it will dry. Sometimes it dries a little bit gritty, but normally it's pretty good for what we need, and it won't take long at all. And then again, we're going to do these little side panels. Just make sure we're thoroughly mixed again. And then these just down in here. And again, you can overcoat this. So if you want to quite heavy weathered, just give it a little bit more. If you want it quite muted, then you can stop. But here it gives you an idea of how this will work. And then again, once this dries back, it dries back quite light. So don't worry about it too much looking very strong. And then the another little touch we can do with this is what I call buffing. So you can actually buff right the way over the top of it to make it really pop. And this is where the big part comes in. So this will really just come to life now. So a little bit just down on the floor. We'll see about the framing work, all of these up around in here. And it will cling to all the recess details and all the little areas on this and really make it all come to life. One thing to think about though, if you're using super glue and obviously the enamels like this, what can happen is it can uh, weaken the enamels. So just a little bit just down in there. And as you can see down the back here, it's actually a little bit soft and it's reactivated. But that's not a problem because we can get in there and repaint by hand. It's just that we've done this a little bit quick before the paint's totally dried. And again, so just a little bit over there, a little bit around the stick. And there we go, that's all set and is now all ready to go. Down in there, to be honest, I'll pop back in there and hand paint that, but obviously doing this on the quick bit here, it's dried uh, and then obviously not totally cured off. All right, so that's good. And then obviously a little bit just down in here for the seat, just to weather this up just a little bit. And again, oils take anywhere between a couple of minutes to dry and hours. 
but they are handleable and workable once you get to that sort of area but just be careful about rubbing them and everything else like that so there we go the quickest weathering job you can ever do set to go just like that so what we're going to do is just let this dry just for a couple of minutes i'll touch that in and then what we'll do is we'll actually get the seat installed into the cockpit and we can look at our first bit of construction where we're going to install the cockpit section inside this and then obviously we'll get the two fuselage halves together and start to button it up and then we're going to look at obviously doing things like big areas like wings uh, and then obviously flat areas as well so we've got control surfaces down in there there's different techniques for gluing each part Okay, so construction of the cockpit is completed. And to be honest, doesn't look too bad. Straight out of the box type build, nothing fancy, nothing everything. Again, if you wanted to, you could pop in there with some more detail harnesses, a little bit of wiring and things like that. But actually, straight out of the box, I don't think that looks too bad at all. Okay, so having a good look through your instructions, making sure you've got any holes that needed opening up on the insides of the uh, the actual fuselage, things like that, and then placing anything. So our point of view, we've got a tail wheel just going down in there, and then obviously we've got a spinner at the front. Usual thing, talks about spinners being freewheeling. This isn't radio controlled, glue it in place because it's only gonna snap if it jams and then obviously you're trying to spin it, it's really not worth it. So first of all, before we even start to put things together with you know things inside it, we just wanna see how well it fits anyway. So straightforward off the bat, you can see we're putting this together and this is bananaing. So what we're looking at is that this is not flat. Both of them aren't flat. So what happens is, when we come to put these together with no out any glue, as you can see, the back is out, the middle is banana in. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing because a little bit of force, a bit of pushing in there, you can see actually it's not a bad fit. So we're checking the undersides. What we're really looking for is to make sure there's nothing that's interfering at the moment. Again, it's always a good thing to look. So just check your seams should be as good as you can possibly get. What can be happen is obviously down in here we had some of the sprue attachment points, things like that. You can just have a little bit that's fouling it. Sand it off, clean it, you're good to go. So if you know those two go together quite well, there's nothing to really stop you when this part is in. But again, we're not gonna commit to glue, we're just gonna place this in. So we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna line it up from how we can see it. And then down in here, we've got some uh, little grooves that the cockpit will fit to. So hopefully that's in and in. So with that sort of in place, without any glue at all, we're gonna then reattach the other half and we're just gonna see how it goes because we don't really wanna get in here with glue and things like that if we've suddenly got a mass problem. And straight off the bat, there's something not right here because it's not going, but a little bit of a click and we can see that is in and the top is in there. And to be honest, that doesn't look too bad at all. I think we're all okay. So nothing's fouling underneath. Everything seems to line up and it goes together. So we're thinking probably not too bad. So what we can actually do now is glue this one in. To be honest with you, you've got two types of glue for this. You want a slower setting type glue. This just gives it that ability to be able to maneuver it once it's down in here, as well as obviously weld it deeply in position to hold it in position. Because we're only gonna be gluing one half in, the other half won't be because it'll be held in place by the two fuselage. So what I like to use is something like a contact to your glue. So as we know, it's got a bead of it is gonna run underneath here. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue underneath there. And again, if you wanted to, you can add a little bit more on the sides here, but as we know, we've got a little bit of framework just comes up here, a little bit of framework just down in there. And again, a little bit just down in here. So with all of those back in, we can then just come along and we can seat it in again into these positions. And then we can give it a little bit of a nudge and again, making sure it's thoroughly in on there. So we're giving it a nudge and we're looking inside the actual cockpit itself and just making sure that firewall down on the inside is pushed right in. Now this is a weld action glue, it's not gonna take long, but if you wanted to, you could literally just come along with a bit of glue in here and just put a little bit more down in there just to make sure that's all in place and it's not going anywhere. The nice thing about using a thicker glue like this particular one, Contactia, or as we got Tamiya's white top, it's got that thing where if it's not perfect, you can wiggle it around, you can get it into there and get it to fit. The nice thing as well is because it's not like a pure liquid, it's not squeezing out over the top and then destroying your paintwork. So this area down in there with that bar running through, you can see there's a glue, there's hint of glue there. You can see the shine of it, but it's not doing anything else. So we're quite happy 
of how that is. So that's pretty much in there. So you've got an option. You can leave that to dry just for a few minutes, just like that. It's not going to take long, but you're happy with the how it is. Then you can come in and obviously put the other side in just like this. So from this point of view, because it's thin little edges pretty much all over this, we don't need to glue it with this stuff because that might just get a bit messy. It might be tipping everywhere, oozing out and causing damage. So from our point of view, the only thing we probably want to worry about is just this little bit under here. Again, just down in there. And then obviously this little bit of framework just down in here and this one on here. Now the reason again for using this type of glue, a thicker glue, it will help it slide in. So if it's jammed up against it, it acts literally like a lubricant and helps it to go in as well. So with those two in there, what we're gonna do is pop in. The only other two little areas we're gonna do is obviously the back wheel just down in here. So this is gonna marry up with these two, and the same with the front. We're just gonna put a little bit of glue just on this front one. And then on the tail, because it's a little bit flat, which we'll talk about more in the other, we're just gonna put a little bit of this in as well, just round there like that again. So we're all good. So literally flipping it over, and we're just gonna start at the front. And we've got a nice fit there. We've got quite a nice fit across the back. We're Pushing on that cockpit half to make sure it's in. And now this tail, because it's glued, we've just got some clips. And we're just gonna come along and we're just gonna clip the tail area all in place, just cause it's got that little bit of glue around on those areas. And then again, we're flipping it over, making sure this is in, it's in and it's square. Same thing again, we're just gonna come from the other side, just put a little bit of glue just down in there and then we are good. If you wanted to, you could clamp this top half and hold it all together. But actually, to be honest, this isn't a bad fit. It's not as bad as I thought we might get. So I'm hopeful that this is actually going to fit in here. No problem at all. Now we've got no glue in any of these areas just yet. So again, under here, we've got an area which is going to be obviously not seen at all because it's got covers on. We're going to use this thicker glue and then we're just going to pop this just down in here because it's got a nice gap capability. And we're just gonna pop this in like this. So usual thing, good old fashioned closed pegs. They're great for this type of job because they can just go in there, push in there and you're good to go. If you wanna use something a little bit nicer, you can obviously use clamps. So those are just all in there like that. This little guy here, we just maneuver that around. And then what we're going to do is leave it. We're just gonna let that sit now for probably around about half an hour to bite and hold itself together. Then we're gonna come in with extra thin and we're gonna go round and we're gonna glue it all together on that one. So whilst we're doing that and that is drying off, what we'll do is just bring these down into play. So this is some of the other control points and it's a bit about like when do you use glue. So again, we've got these ones down in here. So we're just making sure that obviously we've got a little bit of a, uh, a raised uh, bit of uh, ejector pin down in there. So we just make sure that's flush and it's out of the way. And then again, we've got the other half of it down in here. And again, we've got a little bit of ejector pin down in there. So we don't want that to do. But as you can see, you've got a situation, classic example of when it will foul. That's a good one because it's probably high enough to get in the way. So again, we'll just pop in here, take that off. So we've got these. And then obviously we get the other holes for these ones. Uh, we've got tails. So this one in here, you've got a situation where obviously we've got it where this will come over the top. So as always, we will test fit just to make sure it's all good. And you can see it's got no big gaps in here or anything else that's going to be fouling. But the thing we have got, we just pull these apart. We've got a situation where we've got this lip area running down the back and a closed one here. Anywhere that's got a thick lip area like this, it's very hard for extra thin glues to penetrate evenly all the way around. So that's when we would use a glue like this. So using a thicker type glue, just around um, here. And again, this is also, you have to look at how easy is it for this to clean up. So this is actually a doddle to be cleaned up. So we can just pop these down in here and we give them a good squeeze and then hopefully you can see it just oozing slightly out on the other side, which is exactly what we want. And then again, we'll just grab some more little clips just to hold these in place and to make sure these edges stay nice and shut. What you can do is then use a thin glue on a brush just down in areas down in here 
just to encourage that glue to sort of move around, but also because it's just on an edge, it will weld that up quite tight and it will hold it all in there. And then another clamp and you've got it all together just like that. So another example of that is here, because if you were coming along with glue and you're putting glues all around in here, it's gonna dry by the time you come to put it together. And again, we will test fit it to make sure it's all good. And that looks pretty darn good all the way around. We've got a little bit of flash on there, but it's on the outside. So we'll sand it off when it's together. So another good example of using a thicker glue. So we just come along with this. The reason I like contact to your glue like this is purely because it's got a weld action. So it will be welding this all together. And again, popping it down, getting it down in there, a little bit of a squeeze from the middle, just to encourage it all out to the outsides. And then again, you can come in with your little clamps and we'll just pinch one of these just to go on there and that will hold all of that together all right so again same thing on a tail we've got this big flat area all the way down here and then a hard edge so what we will do is we will use the thick glue around the outside and again that will nicely squeeze and come together we'll do the locating tabs but we won't do this edge in the middle because to be honest we'll do this by hand and then again, that just comes in. And then a bit of a squeeze, ooze it out, but don't put your finger in it because what you don't want to do is then touch it and then touch here because otherwise that will happen. Hopefully you can see it. So you've got glue there, so we have to sand that out afterwards. So you're just trying to avoid that. Once it's together, we can just use the extra thin and we can just pop it along this edge because it's a nice little tight edge and it will take care of it like that. And then again, a bit of a nudge. And again, you can use things like tweezers to come in and hold it together, or you can use uh, scissors. It's another good one. So on edges, don't cut them, but you can just give it a nudge to squeeze that glue out without actually getting your fingers involved with it. So again, we'll tell you about getting rid of that glue mark in a moment. That's just down in there. So those are all in there just like that. And then again, we've got this wing section where we've got to put the top halves of the wings on with the lowers. We've already installed, obviously, the wheel well, and it's quite simple. So again, we test fit to make sure. So we've got a line running along here, which could be thin glue. And then obviously this doesn't look too bad, but it has got a little bit of a wobble. It's not wanting to hold, but we're checking it all over to see how this goes. And then down in here, there's a little bit of flash. So what we do, we're just gonna sand that off. And we just check both sides of that. So happy. So again, popping it down and on, have a good look around it, making sure how it goes, how it's all looking. And then obviously this one also becomes part of the flap system. And again, this is some of those areas. So you could spot it just there. We've got a little bit of flash coming through. And again, we'll just check the other side. Because it's on one side, probably on the other. That actually looks pretty good now. But again, hard edge along here. So we could actually use a thin glue on this one because it's a nice tight edge along here and down and in. But it's a lot of area to do. So you'd have to do it in stages. So what we're going to do is going to put a little bit of thin of the thick glue around here because this needs to be buttoned down and together. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of thick glue just down on here. And then what we'll do is we're just going to put a little bit here on the actual little tab areas. But this one is a nice long thicker one so we can actually glue that down in there. And this has got a nice big wide area for it down in there. So again, wide thick areas get glue, thin areas don't. So then again, we'll just pop this down. And then with that on. That'll be enough to all tack it down into position with any luck. And then we can come along with our thin glue and we can then just do these joins down in here. And this join's got a butt up against the fuselage half. So you don't want glue sticking out of it and all these areas. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pinch some of these just to hold this all into position. We've got a peg. So that can hold that front. And then what we've got is this leading edge all the way along here to do. So we call this, or I call it the reverse action. So what you do, load up your brush, hold it upside down like this. And then we're gonna come along from the underside and tap the underside and let the capillary action 
run up and underneath. Now the reason for not doing it this way is if you was to do it, it will run off and guarantee it will go to your finger, you end up with a fingerprint. But hold it this way means the glue will track along the bottom edge. So that then will hopefully take care of any gaps down underneath. And it goes in. So you can load up quite a bit of glue and just drag it along that leading edge of the wing all the way down here and then again if you've got some areas where you don't want to get your fingers in use a pair of scissors just to pull them together just to make sure that they're all working and we've got no gaps along this leading edge whatsoever we've got a little one just over here actually so we use a little bit more glue just down in there to be honest i think that's pretty much got it and we use the scissors just to pull it together and get the glue to ooze out if we can you can see it along here, it's oozing out, which means it'll be a nice easy cleanup. But what we're mainly looking at is we know then we've got a really good seal. Okay, so if we look at it now, you can see nice bits coming out right the way through. And then on the back here, same thing, we've got this little join just down in here. So what we can do, if I just grab my glasses, we can have a look down you can see we've got these little areas just down in here so we're just going to pop a little bit of glue in each one of these again yeah, quite a nice little design touch so these other parts will be drying now so now we can just pop these clamps in just to hold those down and then again we've got a little edge just down in here so it's these little areas where you can just get in here with extra thin glue and you can let the glue get around in amongst it all without any fear obviously the edge you can just touch that in right away and again not too bad but if you wanted to you could get your brush down into here just to glue up those areas but to be honest it all looks pretty darn good as we speak so this wheel well just down in here we've got that main glue in there but what we can do is use the thin glue just to get properly in there and amongst it all which i think that is so again you can give it a little bit of a nudge and that is it and that's how we get the wings and then what we do we'll show you about cleanup on this wing but it's a nice solid one you can see the beads of glue coming out of it which means it's all good so now we can probably undo these and we're just going to check to make sure that this seal is nicely done for this wing one. It's quite important because obviously it needs to be a good fit so it fits up on the other side. So what we'll do, we'll pop that back on there again just to hold that in. So there we go, that's the basics of obviously getting the wings. We'll do exactly the same on the other side. So really what we're talking about is big areas, big flat areas that come together. And obviously on wings and that, you need a slower setting glue. So again, my favorite one is to use this one, which is the Contactia Professional. Really, really nice, because it's very slow drying, gives you a nice little bit of wigger room. It acts as a lubricant to help parts fit in and get in together and stuff like that. Again, so really, really good. So what we do, we'll pop back to this one now. So on here, if we undo these, They've got enough to hold this into place now. So what we need to do is obviously we need a little bit of force just to hold this down into there. So again, you can use pegs, you can use friction clamps and stuff like that. Another way of doing it is to tack it with a little bit of super glue just to hold it into position. So then obviously just a tiny spot, glue the rest of it. But the rest of it is actually looking all pretty good on here and on with the tail and stuff like that. So what you can do is come along, you wanna hold it into position the best you can to level it up to make minimal work so have a good look at it that doesn't look too bad then we're going to take the thin glue and because we're on a wider area we should be able to get in but we're going to put a little bit just down in that hole in there and then obviously in this hole at the top the capillary action will track underneath and you can see by the glue coming up so it sorry the paint coming up where it's melting it how it's holding it into position so that's pretty darn good and then what we're going to do we're just going to come along and we're going to touch whilst there's a little bit of a gap there so literally just come along touch it drops into the gap and then we can squeeze it together and we're looking at it to make the best join we possibly can and from our point of view 
our eyes are always going to be drawn to this top edge that no one's really going to be looking at the bottom so we're making sure that this is our best edge so for any cleanup that we do is minimal on the top and then this stuff doesn't take very long to dry at all so then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop along with a little bit of glue and we're just brushing it on the surface and then we hold and then obviously we sort of count for a little bit we're happy of how that is and then obviously we should be able to release and then obviously we're a little bit too quick at the front here so we're just going to add a little bit more glue at the front and then what we're going to do now is over glue as i call it right the way through so you can hold this upside down if it's a really tight curve the whole point of over gluing is that if you have to do any sanding work at all it's enough glue that's bitten right the way through because if it's just on the surface if you sand it it will then release because you've got rid of the glued area so you need enough glue to be able to go through right the way in there and glue that together the great thing about obviously using this type of glue which is obviously the quick set it's dry to the touch almost immediately so if you wanted to you could grab a little bit of masking tape or tamiya tape in this case you can just pop a little bit on the underside wrap that right the way over and that holds that in place but the glue won't melt through because it's dry enough as it gone on here same goes under here so we're just going to work the back end of this together so again looks pretty good come along thin glue loosely let it go just a little bit let the glue go in between then come together and then squeeze and then it takes care of the seam and then as you can see that seam line is pretty much non-existent all the way under there once you're happy with it then you can re-glue but just remember when you re-glue like this what's going to happen is it's going to melt what was down there the first time so if you're a little bit worried about uh, how it's going to go keep hold of it because it might just all ping open on you and then obviously we can hold and then same thing once this begins to dry off and you're happy you can take a little bit of tape if it's on a curve because obviously trying to do this on a uh, an actual flat area isn't a problem because you can put a clamp on but if it's on a curve like this we want it to be a nice straightforward curve so we've got the front and the backs done and then same thing we'll turn our attention to the front up here and again it's not the best fit and join it's a little bit gnarly you might notice along here but what we're going to do is pull it together and again we're just going to seat it as best as we can all the way in here so we've got a little bit of a gap here so that will allow the glue to go in and flow and again this is a nice big flat top so it'll be fun to fill and take care of it so we want it to be as best as it possibly can and again this I think is going to need a little bit of a tension up here so that's together once it's together we pushed it in there and as you can see a little bit of oozing of the glue and to be honest with you we often talk about different types of plastic hard and soft I like this one because as you can probably see when you squeeze this together you get this sort of beading and that's great because that means it's proper eating itself in there and it's going to be a nice like a weld and that's exactly what we want so again once we've got a little bit in there we're just going to over glue so over gluing is just putting more glue on top of a glued area but make sure you keep hold of it make sure it's all together and that's down in there and then again as that's all drying we're just going to have a little bit more tape look behind the end normally i have these all lined up on a desk next to me but uh, didn't think that far ahead and again it's even holding itself but i wouldn't trust it over time it can come undone so again we'll just get that all down in there that's all pretty good this as you can see is already melting underneath the tail's all going good so then that's all pretty much good to hold itself together so what we do is this particular one we will leave it for around about an hour to totally dry because don't forget what you've done is you've melted the plastic you've softened everything it will need to reharden. once it's all in there and it's together we'll unmask it all and then we'll have a look to see if there's any seams and any joins that we need to do to be honest we are going to have to do some work here on the top which is good because we can show you how to do that but generally these ones under here are holding together and again that cockpit's looking pretty darn good down in there 
I think, again, this is the thing. You can't see much that's going in there. And by the time you've got the canopy on here, I won't worry about it at all. Again, that's looking pretty darn good. So there we go. That's the basics of actually construction gluing, getting them one to use them, so forth and so on. So what we're going to do, we'll let them dry. I'll get the other wing bits done, those other things to be together. And we can talk about actually construction work of getting it in there and obviously a little bit of filler work on the fuselage. Okay, so fuselage is together. And to be honest, it looks really, really nice, but we have got some telltale types of problems on here. So basically what we're gonna do now is look at what needs filling and what we can get away with sanding. So to be honest with you, it's quite easy to see down in here, we've got a little uh, sort of chip out of it. This is actually the sprue tab area. And up here, it's basically got quite a gap and it is stepped. Now on this one up here, you might be able to blend it, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's gonna happen. Also, if you're looking just down in here, this is actually depressed. There's a small depression running down in here, so there's no way we can just sand that. We've got a small sink mark on this side as well, so that's gonna to need to be taken care of. So generally, we're gonna lose quite a bit of detail along here because we need to fill it and we need to sand it. Sometimes though you think, okay, well we can use scrape cleaning. That is definitely one of those areas where it isn't gonna work at all. So we need to take care of up here and this entire section, that will have to be a filler job. But it's not all bad news because on the back here, we might be able to get away with actually just using a scrape clean down in here, especially up around the tail, that's no problem at all. I've also done, as you can see, a little bit of test fitting. All of this is literally a loose fit. And again, it's not too bad at all. You know, we're in a situation where these can go in and to be honest, they don't even need glue. They fit so well down in here, all of these tail areas, and it is still all a complete loose fit. So that's actually very nicely fitting. And again, underneath here, I don't think that's gonna be a mass job. I don't think that's actually gonna need any filler underneath there. But one area that is gonna need some attention is obviously the fuselage halves meeting up to the wing area. So when we pop these in and we can get them in, it's not too bad, but that's, yeah, that's just not, that's not nice. Okay, so that's gonna need a little bit of work down in there. And then also, it's not so bad up here at the back, but I think it's gonna need some areas down in this little area where they fit onto the side here. There's quite a bit of a, a seam and gap coming down in there. So that's gonna need a little bit of work as well. But I think it's easier to work this somewhat in sections just from a point of view of handling and putting bits and pieces back in with the wings off of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at filling up in here first of all. So technically it's not too bad. There is a little bit of light sort of scraping that we can do on here just to ease this up. So for this, I've got a scraping tool and it's got a bit of a curve onto it. You can use other scrapers as well, but you know, this is my sort of chosen way of doing it. So if we just pop my glasses on here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flatten off this seam just to start with. So we're just gonna put this on and we're just gonna run this back and forth on the actual seam so we can see. So I'm maneuvering this so it's catching it in the light so I can see the shine of the glue and how much it's gonna go off. And you can see on here we've got a high spot and a low spot. So we're just trying to sort of level those out a little bit and make our way along. And then some of it, like on here, it's actually not too bad. We can probably get away, but we have got these sink marks each side of it, so they're gonna to need to be done. So the great thing about scrape cleaning like this to see what we've got is you're taking off minimal amount of plastic, but also you're not making any damage to the side areas either. So we're just gonna move this down a little bit so it's a bit flatter, and then we can just go along and we can just take off the higher areas. And again, down in here, that's definitely gonna need a little bit of filler in there. So again, but this area in the middle isn't looking too bad, all right? Up here, we can see we're definitely gonna need a little bit of filler. So turning our attention down the back now, we can see that probably we can just lightly scrape down and you can probably see how well that's just gone. We are okay with all of that. And again, just up in here, I don't think we're gonna have a problem this area on the back so we're just lightly carving side to side but fortunately we have got and again this is from the sprue it's uh, torn a little bit of a, a hole in there so I think that's going to need just a little bit of work in there so to start off with we're just going to lightly sand it just to flatten it off but again we've still got a little divot down in there so that's going to have to be taken care of it the rest of it actually is not too bad on the underside down in here we're going to have another little light scrape just to see what we've got and again, we're not looking too bad, but there's something just down in this back area that I'm not 
too keen on. I think we're going to need to take care of some areas there. So yeah, we're definitely going to need a, just a little bit of filler just down in here as well. Up in this section, we're not worried about it. So on here, I would say we'll treat this somewhat as a little bit of a separate. We'll do the filler work all in here so we can tidy it. And also it's just gonna be easier to handle it than it would be if you had this section on. So what we'll do is we'll tidy this up first, you know, get it done nice, and then we can just come along, we can place this on here. We can get the actual under guard down in here. That will fit in as well. And we can see exactly how all that's gonna fit. Because again, it's quite a gnarly little gap all in there. That might need tidying up as well. But for the moment, we're gonna work on this one here. So loads of different fillers out there. Personally, I call it Well 101. This is homemade styrene filler. There's a link to it. You can see exactly how I go about doing it. But all we do, we take this sprue goo, as I call it, and then we're just going to literally come along. So to start with, we're just going to pop a little bit down in here. So what you want to do when you're putting this on is give it a little bit of a nudge, because you don't want an air pocket underneath it. So we're just going to run it across, and we want it to be sitting a little bit proud. So again, we just add a little bit more. I have mine to the consistency of basically like PVA glue. But, uh, and again, we've got these little areas just here. So we're just gonna put a little bit just down in here. And then we've got the shine, so we can see where it sort of starts. We're gonna move just down on these areas. And again, we're just trying to get it to all just stick a little bit proud and up, just so it allows for any shrinkage, because this stuff will probably shrink a little bit. But the thing is, because it's sticking up proud, shouldn't really be a problem. So that's that one. We've got this little sink mark on this side as well. So we're just going to put a little bit in there. And again, this is one of these things. We can do it with one coat. It may take two or three. Not really a problem each way. And the great thing about using styrene filler, like we said before, is that if you need to rescribe, which we will here, and if you need to come in and do any type of repair work, it's really easy to scribe over. So that's that one there. Next up is this little divot just down in here. So again, I'm just gonna come in with a little bit. So that's it, that's all that's going to need. And then we'll flip this over and just this little area down the back here. Again, there's a small little divot. So I'm just pop a little bit of glue along here. And to be honest with you, I can just spot a small little divot just up in here. So again, just pop a bit of this in. And remember to give it a bit of a poke, because otherwise you can get air bubbles underneath it. And then when they pop, you end up with like a welt. So there we go. That's all on there. That takes, depending obviously on the thickness of it, to be honest, I'm going to pop a little bit just up here in the front section there just to hold all of that in there again that's going to take roughly around about sort of an hour to get to be touch dry but for it to totally go off honestly if you can leave it 24 hours it'll be fine and that way it's very easy to sand and clean and everything else like that so literally that's it forget about it leave it off to one side and then we'll come back and have a proper look at that a little bit later same thing goes for the leading edges of these areas so obviously where we squeeze them all together you can feel it's quite rough you can take just a sander and you can literally just give them a light sand right the way over and then feel it. Feels a little bit rough still. So what we're gonna do, keeping it quite flat to start with. And then once we've taken it and that feels all right now, then we can start to rotate it just back and forth, just so we've got that curve still on the front edge. And again, the feeling it feels really small. And then looking at it, we've got no gaps along this whatsoever. And obviously that's really, really important. Same for this area, right the way in. And again, we're feeling it, we're looking for gaps, we are good. And then obviously we'll do the same. And we're gonna do the same to all of these. So we still got these little bits all around it. So again, now we can go around and we can just clean those up. And again, because obviously it's now drying off, it just comes off really easy and then what you can do is just take yourself a, an older sponge is great for this and you can just give it a gentle rub right the way round. and this is also how we get rid of those fingerprints so on one of these somewhere we've got a fingerprint I remember where it is now 
on one of these here it is so this is that tail so we've got a little fingerprint just down in there what you can do obviously if you've got a skinny stick these are great for these you can just pop it in there in between the details and we can just sand out the fingerprint but you want to do this because otherwise there's nothing worse when you get into prime stage especially and you've still got fingerprints in it and you can just take them out literally just like that and again that's it gone and then once you've actually got most of it all gone just come in there with an older sanding sponge and just give it a light rub over and that takes care of the actual fingerprints down onto it and then to be honest again trading edges and things like that just give them a bit of a sand just to blend them and also you're making sure there's no splits so you're making sure it's solid all the way around and don't forget to sand these inner parts as well just so they make a nicer join so obviously on these areas down in here we've already done this one but again sanding up that area got a perfect edge on that now nice and smooth but also the tail area as well so we make sure any damage sprue tabs all the rest of it is nice and clean and again right the way around all important make sure you do the trailing edges are just as important as the leading edges and they are down as well and then hopefully this will come in and when they go together you can see you've got a perfect area. and we can do some deflection with this if you wanted to you could actually maneuver these up to give a little bit of deflection by cutting these back but to be honest we'll probably go with the, the neutral position and as we've seen already they fit beautifully on the tail so they are all set now and ready to go in there just like that so that's good so same thing goes with these we'll do this to be honest there's some area down at the bottom here with the cooler that needed a little bit of filler so we've already put a bit in there and it's the same thing two halves together so exactly the same as with the fuselage and then once these are all dried and looking good we'll show you about clean up sanding them making sure then obviously re-riveting rescribing we'll do all of these so then that bit of the construction is completed we can get the wings on these wing tips exactly the same type of thing they're going to fit right onto the edges of these once you've got the right wing tip the right way around okay on here but again a little bit of a gap needs a little bit of tidy up it's the same thing making sure these inner edges and you feel them they feel quite rough they need to be nice and sorted out and once they're in we can go in there and again you're looking for this to be as seamless as possible because in reality it wouldn't have a join so we take a little bit of time about getting those in but if it does need it even though there's a rivet line right next to it we'll fill it and then obviously we can pop any riveting details back in afterwards but there we go that's the basics of getting them together glued up and again next up we'll be looking at sanding okay so we've covered construction we talked about gluing things together we've put a little bit of filler on and to be honest we know we've used uh, a little bit of our own homemade uh, styrene filler or sprue goo but that this will apply to any type of filling at all so what you want to do is basically have a good look down there so you're just going to sort of angle it to see what's going on. Do you sort of catch it in the light with your eye? And what you're trying to make sure is that you've actually filled the said uh, problems that you've got. So over on here, you can see these are slightly raised, which is good. And this has been drying now for almost 24 hours. Uh, so it's gone proper in. But also, you can do a quick test. Just give it a poke with your nail. See if you can dent it. If you can still dent it, honestly, don't touch it. One of the big things about this hobby is patience. You know, too many problems can be caused by literally getting in there a little bit too soon. If you left it another maybe hour or six hours or a day or something else like that, it will sort itself out. Filling is definitely one of these. A lot of the times that can happen with all types of filler, it doesn't matter if it's styrene filler, if it's like a lacquer based thinner or an acrylic based filler, things like that, is that you get shrinkage. Shrinkage is just par for the course, to be honest, they all do it. Unless you're using a super glue, which we'll talk about in a future video, but we'll talk about a bit in a minute. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's going to happen. To the degree that will happen will also depend on how much you've actually got in here and how long it's been drying. So if you put in quite a lot of it, you're gonna get quite a lot of shrinkage, purely because because obviously as the chemical reaction happens with some fillers it contracts in on itself and then obviously normal air drying ones obviously on the surface it's totally dry but deep down especially in the join area it could still be wet so what can happen is is that you come along now sand it all back it looks absolutely fine and perfect but it is still shrinking it's still contracting back in and then what can happen is you get what I call ghost seams and these are the ones which weren't there you can swear blind you know a couple of hours ago and then you look at your model 
and there's a seam line back in there but it's not like as it was it would just be a little perhaps depression along the line and that's what I call a ghost line and again it's one of those you basically got to sand it back worst case scenario is if you're a little bit of a quicker builder you might be in a situation you've painted your model and it's happened to me many many times you painted your model you come along it's looking fantastic and then a couple of weeks later you look at it and you think there's a depression in that and if you want to see that in action go back and have a look at the ATM build because uh, that is exactly what happened to me so I ended up having to respray basically the entire top seam line because it had depressions all the way through but we were running quite quick the other thing to think about is obviously the plastic so not only can these sort of go seams or obviously depressions be caused by the filler, it can be used by the glue you're using. So our case, what we've used is extra thin glues. These are weld action glues. And again, they are softening the plastic. They're melting it together. And over time, as this then goes off and goes hard, it will contract. And those can cause seams as well. So it may be in an area where you've not even got any filler. But all of a sudden you've got these ghost seams appearing and that can be caused by that type of glue as well. So if you're using, you know, normal type glues as well, which aren't weld action glues, the ones that aren't melting it, they're less likely to happen. They tend to just dry and that's it. But if you are using hot action glues, weld action glues, and specifically if you've got a softer plastic, like we know when we were squeezing this together, you might remember that it was actually coming out and it was beading out and worming out the actual seam lines. That's because it's proper melted. It's giving you probably the best structural join you can find it'll be as good as any bit of plastic on your actual model It'll be very difficult to pull it apart the downside is though if you've got quite a bit in there this reaction can be carrying on and drying a long time especially if it's a deep join you know if you've really penetrated right the way through as you should both the actual seams are properly joined it can be going on literally for days and days and days before it stops going on so again if you've then pushed forward sanded it and you're going through that happens it might not be your filler could be your glue so just remember that one as well as you're going through Again, patience. Don't forget, there's lots of other jobs you can be doing whilst these things are going on. For our point of view, we carried on and we did the actual the wing section. So we've gone along here, we've built the filters down in here, got the wings together whilst we were waiting for all this to dry. You could carry on doing other jobs like undercarriages. And this goes not just for aircraft, but for armor, shipbuilding, figures, you name it, cars, the lot. It can be doing other jobs as these things are happening and going off. But that's assumed we're all happy. We've looked at it, we've got no problem at all, so you're going to sand it. Now, it would be really, really straightforward to come in with a nice heavy-duty sander and just plow through it all. Again, this is one of those ones that's a common mistake. You think it's a nice, quick job, we're going to go through. But don't forget, as we can see down on here, we catch it in the light, we have got some very nice riveting details running down in here and in here and on here and around, especially down the back areas on this. So we don't really just want to go in there with this. Because it's a flat top as well, we're going to destroy all of that surface detail at the top because once you've gone through with a you know a hard sander you're probably going to come in with some type of sponge and go over it so before you know it you've completely obliterated that entire section of it so you know you either forget about it pretend it was never there or you've got to go back and you've got to rescribe you've got to re-rivet and again these are all steps which isn't a problem but technically you can save yourself a bit of time by being a little bit more careful so there's a couple of things you could do you could mask these areas off to protect them which works really well but don't forget you're going to have a step so if you've got tape running down both sides and you're sanding it at some point you're going to have to take the tape away to get rid of it so what you're better off doing though is taking off little amounts as you can just trying to shave through it and one of the great things for that is scrape cleaning so scrape cleaning you know you can use tools just like this this is an alec scraper which is absolutely great so you've got flat edges as you can see as recessed curves and things like that as well and again different sizes which we'll talk about different things the little sticker forget that it's just because when they're on the table they're really hard to pick up so it's the actual flooring models dome stickers that we do to help that another one you can buy which these are absolutely great I've been using them now the last couple of years really really cheap these are made by trumpeter and these are basically seam scrapers uh, this is the arrow type one it's got two curves onto it but you can use the body as well this flat area is uh, good for this as well there's lots of manufacturers out there and again I've got loads of different ones uh, this is Citadel's one this is a scraper as well so this is quite good for getting in tiny little areas you've got a curve onto it and you've got a big flat side as well but again you could just use a blade you know you can come in with a knife blade and you can scrape on this and go through the business just as well so you don't need anything particularly fancy to it but what you're going to be doing now is with the scraper keeping it quite flat this has got a slight curve across this one 
one. So by keeping your scraper on this, what's going to happen is, is that you're just going to take off the highest point all the way down. And again, this is, you can slightly rock it, but what you won't do is take off this riveting details down both sides of this. So all we're going to do is we're just going to come along with our scraper and just very lightly going to just start to scrape at it. And what we're looking at is the shine. You see the shininess on this, it's a bit difficult to see, I know, uh, but as you see, you can see the shine of it down in there. You're just trying to get rid of all of that. And also you can then look at exactly how it's working with other things, because obviously as you're pushing along, some areas will clean up really quickly, others will take a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is just pop my glasses on here so I can see a little bit more. But you can probably see by the swath coming off him here, it's very, very thin amount. You're not taking off big chunks of this, but you can use the bigger part down in here, the nice big flat area, just for taking this back. And we're just gonna push this along. Now there's a couple of things to remember about sanding. First of all, we were talking about it obviously melting, uh, the actual getting sink marks. If you're sanding at this with a very fine grit and you're going on this, you're going to generate heat which will soften this plastic and again could cause sink marks and things like that in there. So again, this is all things to be mindful. So what we're trying to do with a scraper is to take out pretty much everywhere on here. We're just going to do this first section so we can show you. Again, we're just popping down in here and cleaning up. So hopefully you can see, if I catch it in the light, we've got all the riveting down both sides of this now, but and again, we've still got the panel line which is going to be really easy to put back in, but we've caused no damage anywhere else apart from that. And that is now running my finger on it very, very smooth. No problem at all with that one. And that's the beauty about it. So you've just taken off a very fine amount and you've total control on everywhere you go. Now, if you've got an area, obviously we've got these two sink marks down in here and this bit over here, to be honest, where we don't have any detail around it. So that's gonna be quite straightforward. You can use a sander. And again, I know a lot of people, you know, they'll come up to me and obviously as a manufacturer of sanders, they're all about, oh, you need to do a fine one. Uh, I totally disagree because doing this year, as you know, you'll generate heat. What you want to do is take away the material as quickly as possible without generating heat. So you want to use a coarser sander. So, you know, at the end of the day, the whole point of sanding this first time is to take away all the material. When you're sanding afterwards, you're repairing all the damage you've caused by that sander. So you want to do it as quickly and as easily as possible. So this is actually dual sided. This is our strongest one that we do, our coarsest. The fine sign of that is absolutely great for this so we're just going to place it flat on the top and we're going to come down and I tend to do a 45 degree rub to the area so we're just keeping it flat we're not going anywhere else and we're just walking it slightly up and down and then we'll have a look and again we're looking for any shiny areas in there because we want all the shiny areas to go and again we're just going to pop back pretty much got all of that just a little bit so now we're just going to rock it slightly from side to side just to aid that along and that's taking care of all of that so now we've just got a little bit of roughness there so we'll take care of that in a minute you might also remember at the front here we've got these two sink marks that are caused by the actual locating pins each side. We've got the riveting just below here so we can actually place this flat on top. We're not pushing down, we're not bending it round, we're just leaning it over the top and lightly gonna rub. So this then will just take off the highest point without wearing everything else. So you might see over here we've got a little uh, couple of details so we've got an access port so we don't want to annoy that and obviously this one in front we've got that. The other way of doing it of course is you can use a skinny. So we do these as skinny sticks as well, which I know this sounds like an advert for the products, but these are great for getting in little areas and causing no damage to anything around. And again, slight rocking motion. We're still doing this sort of 45 degrees across and we're just taking out that sink mark just there. So that, so that side has gone. We've just got this little one over here. Hopefully you can catch it somewhat in the light. Just see it just down in there. So we're gonna take this one out now. And again, sanding at about 45 degrees and we just got a little bit over here. So we're just gonna take that one out. And then just running that across. And that's all of those taken out. We've just got a little bit just up here. So we're just gonna 
very lightly. And again, we're just gonna very lightly, not pushing down at all, run it over here. And this will help take out that seam across here. All right, so that's really, really nice. And now what we can do with the skinny stick is we can just go right up the middle here, avoiding those areas on the side. And then again, just do this little bit at the front. And that's pretty much exactly where we want to be. So we haven't destroyed any detail, any riveting on the side. You can still see all the riveting down in there. We can still see the riveting in here and all of those other, and then feel it. You don't want to feel any bumps. If you can feel bumps, there's something going on and you can properly get down and have a look. So now we've got rid of all of those. Now we can come along with some finer grit. So we just got a normal medium grit because it's blue, it means it's medium. And again, not pushing down very lightly, just over the top. And there we go. And what you're looking for is the scratches. Try and catch them in the light. You want to take care of all of the scratches. That's nice. And we just work our way to the front area here. And we're not pushing down. We're just literally letting the sander do all the work. And we're just going to run right the way across. That's really nice. And then down in here, we're not pushing down. We're just going to go right the way over all of these. over those and there we go that's entire section is sanded perfectly now so then what you can do is obviously you can use finer ones and come along so down in here we've got one of our polishers and literally we're just going to go across and as we know the polisher will not take any damage with it it takes a minute so you can go right over riveting details you can go all over everywhere with it and you'll be absolutely fine and this will give you a very nice satin finish right the way over and then if you want to check it flip it over to the white side and you can polish the plastic up now just to see exactly what's going on and to check all your seams and everything else and now hopefully you can see this is gorgeously glossy and we've got no seams in it or any areas that is all absolutely and catching it in the light you can see when you move from side to side you've got no defects whatsoever and that's the nice thing about actually giving it a quick polish so you can check it right the way through and as you can see we've still got all of the riveting on both sides right next to that seam and everywhere else so that takes care of all of that and that's the beauty and that's really on a flat type of seam up here exactly the same will go for the top of the other one so we've got this small little hump here where we just got to do a little bit of work so we're going to put a flat sander right on the top and just very lightly give it a rub and then that way it will plane off and make it all exactly the same level so just on the top right the way through and then again very very lightly just each side and gentle rock just to sort of square it off and again if you want to you're worried about damage between the panel lines you can just come in and do the same on there and again we're just going to work up the seam making sure we're happy everywhere And then exactly the same, we're just going to take a sponge and the sponge will conform then around the edge. Just like that. And then again, we just use a polisher just to see what's going on. And then again, you can't really even see where that was there now. Totally smooth. And again, use your finger, feel it. Can't feel it. You know, you're all good. That's absolutely fine down in there. Same with these under here will be exactly the same as well. So we're going to sand off and we'll take care of all of those just like that. The last thing is, if you have got one of these scrapers, which are the Alex scrapers, which are absolutely great, you've got curves on them. So this means if you wanted to, you can then clean up leading edges like this. So you can put the actual blade down in here, making sure obviously it's got enough movement each side and you can lightly shave off everything and it will make a nice curved edge these are great not so much on this one because it's got the details here but if you have got uh, obviously trailing edges you know like these what you can do you've got very small little ones like on the end here we've got a tiny little tooth you can just pop it in here and it will shave it down and give you a nice curved edge just like that and the thing is it's not flattened or anything else like that it's a totally curved edge to it which is a really nice little touch we do it again 
you can see you get a tiny little bit of swath coming off like this which then gives you a really very nice edge so it's not flat it sort of gives it a rounded bit off to those so again it's great for leading edges so on here we've got the tail going up here we can just we'll find a slightly bigger one because it's a bit bigger at the beginning we can just literally scrape it up and down and the same get rid of the rudder and then that gives you a really nice finish and then as i always would i'd literally just pop in with a sander afterwards and just give it a light sand and then a bit of a polish up just like that and you're all literally good to go and that's the secret to sanding pretty much everywhere very very nicely done so it's great for on wings it's great for doing obviously this type of thing so forth and so on anywhere on your model but again the key to this is patience just let it go and you'll be fine so next up for us re-riveting and re-scribing <laughs> 